Speaking of baseball, after Bryce Harper flew out in the eighth inning, teammate Jonathan Papelbon called Harper out for not running it out to first base. The two exchanged words on the way back to the dugout, and then they got into a fight, needed to be separated by teammates. Skip, big deal, no deal. Steve A, I've seen a lot worse in my time, especially the night that Barry Bonds put Jeff Kent up against the dugout concrete, uh, which, which <laughs> Kent deserved. But in this case, this was a there predictable, yeah, there you go. This was a predictable product of the Nationals' disgraceful collapse this year. So then you have Papelbon, who's been a huge disappointment, pitching against his old team, right. the Phillies. And he had the audacity to call out Bryce Harper, who well could win the MVP, That's for right. not running out a pop-up in a game that they're they're out of it that didn't even matter anymore and what what a disgrace that was but nothing really happened in the fight well i wasn't talking about really the fight so much skip i think this is a product first of all rizzo should have never brought papal bond there to begin with story you was your closer he had was. 28 saves at he the was. time yeah. okay and then ever since then he's had one save they were in first place now they lost the division mm -hmm. nine and a half games out the mets have clinched the nlc the nl mm -hmm. east yep. you look at a guy like bryce harper you talk about papal bond he was clearly bad chemistry added to the locker room it's going to get the man Manager Matt Williams fired. Yep, it Rizzo is. needs to look at himself. Need and Bryce Harper is going to eventually leave mm. for my New York Yankees. Mm. Oh, look at, mm. look they, at, they use some right now. Eventually. And they don't yeah, have I agree with that. I agree yeah. with that. That's fair. That's a low blow on mm. your part. But it's, but it's okay. It's all right. Don't forget, not You'll just see. baseball tonight, Monday Night Football. Chiefs right. at Packers will react to that game that. first thing on Tuesday. Now 3-0 for the first time since reaching the Super Bowl in 2003, defeating the division rival Saints Sunday in New Orleans 27-22. But everything didn't go Carolina's way. During the game, Cam took a hit near the sideline as he released the ball. Now after he got up looking for a flag and turned toward the referee, Ed Hockley, for explanation. And Hockley said something to Cam that just absolutely stunned him. Take a listen. The response that I got was, Cam, you're not old enough to get that call. So I'm looking at him like, what? Said, Jesus, I didn't think you had to have seniority to get a personal foul or anything like that. I'm ticked off, really. You know, just the fact that it's kind of, one, did he miss the call? If he would say he missed the call, okay, that's one thing. For, but for his response to be what it was, I'm not old enough to get that call. Jeez. So, heaven forbid he gets the, any rookies. You know, they're going to have a long day, man. Ooh. NFL VP of officiating Dan Blandino was on NFL Network this morning and said that Ed Hockley denied saying this, but Blandino also said if the conversation is confirmed after an investigation, Hockley could face discipline. Skip, mm. what do you make of all this? Stephen A., <clears throat> I'm on Cam's side here. Now, I'm having to take Cam's word for it that Ed Hockley said to him what Cam said that he said, but the way Cam said it in his post-game media session came across to me as completely authentic. He didn't seem to be guessing about it. He seemed 100% sure that's what Ed Hockley said to him as soon as he bounced up without getting a call. So to me, if that's true, and I'm having to, I'm, I'm going to guess that it was true, but I could be wrong. We'll hear, maybe we'll hear from Ed Hockley today. I don't know. We haven't he needs to say I, something. He, he does need to say something. I'm with you on that. If, if he did say that, it was completely out of bounds, and he should be disciplined for saying that to him. Now, we don't usually hear this in the sport of football. We hear it a lot in baseball, that there'll be a lot of back and forth between a play dump and a pitcher after the game. They'll, they'll fire back and forth ver verbal volleys. But I can't remember the last time that it came out after an NFL game, the quarterback calling out the head referee. Remember, he's the crew chief. And just for those who don't know, he's become something at Hockey League of a celebrity yeah. ref in the National Football League. This is his 26th season, and for 24 of those seasons, he has been a crew chief. So he was the big cheese right away as, as a young referee. And he has often been voted by coaches as one of the top officials in football, one of the top referees. And he's also become something of a celebrity ref in that he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated in 2012 when the refs, remember the, the impasse, yep. the labor impasse ended. They cheered when they yep. came back. But my question to you, and I'm throwing it out to our viewers, is it possible that Ed Hockley has gotten a little too full of himself, that he's going to now interpret the rules the way he wants to interpret the rules? What I don't get is, Cam's not a young player anymore. This is his fifth year. I don't consider him a young pup anymore at age 26. 
And so I'm having to guess what Ed was trying to say to him. Is, is he saying that only aging quarterbacks who are immobile get that kind of call? I don't know. Is, is he saying that Cam's still young enough and mobile enough and just good enough that you, I'm not going to give you that call? Well, if that's what he's saying, that is so out of bounds because you're now refing players by their ability or their age. And as Cam said, what's he going to say to a rookie? You know what? It, it's not fair to Cam Newton. And I'm happy that he called him out. But in the end, you know and I know, this may not play well with other referees around the league that you broke the vow of silence on the football field. What is said here stays here. It's out there in public now. And I'm, I'm not sure that Cam set himself up for getting exactly preferential treatment from this point forward from other referees. Fire away. I have a bevy of thoughts on this issue. Number one, <clears throat> I completely believe Cam Newton. That's number one. Me too. Um, it is, to be fair to Ed Hockley, we haven't heard his side. We haven't heard from him directly. So in the interest of fairness, we have to throw that caveat out there. But I don't think that Cam's words alone is just piercing. I think the fact that he has it supported by video really highlights it. If you look, you can't tell what Cam, Ch Cam Newton mm -hmm. is saying. I almost had to sneeze, excuse me. He's saying that. Excuse me. There you go. Mm -hmm. That's what I need to get out. You can't say for sure what that we didn't. Nobody heard what Hockley said to him. But look at Cam's reaction. Yep. Look at how he stops and looks at him, and then walks I'm back. I'm with you. You clearly yep. could see that Hockley said something to him yep. that made him stop. Which is why the reporters, smart enough to pick up yep. on it, asked. What was that about? And Cam highlighted what was said to him. So on that point, you're absolutely right. When you speak to the issue of an official and him talking about Cam's lack of seniority, it's a couple of things you peel from that, Skip. Number one, are you really saying? Because Cam's not that young anymore. Like you said, he's been in the league five years. Mm -hmm. So what are you trying to say? He's not Drew Brees. He's not Big Ben. He's not Tom Brady. He's not Peyton Manning, because that's what you're saying. I think that's so. basically what you're saying. What else is there to say? How many quarterbacks in the NFL have been starting quarterbacks for five plus for five mm -hmm. plus seasons? I mean, think about that for a second here. Go down a list of quarterbacks. I mean, the Carson Palmers of the world, mm -hmm. you can throw him out there. Sure. Russell Wilson is, is, is younger. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, yeah. Nick Foles is younger. He Teddy is. Bridgewater mm -hmm. is younger. Aaron Rodgers obviously is up in there. Yeah. You know, that, that that equation, Matthew Stafford, when you going to say Matthew Stafford isn't young enough. So he's basically he's clear. And Skip, allow me to spread and, or, or transcend from mm -hmm. football to baseball as well. You know, I watched Madison Bumgarner for the San Francisco Giants pitch last week and have a 17-second stare down with the umpire. Let me tell you how the, egregious the play that down, was. Right? Yeah. With the play yeah. umpire, right? Let me tell you how egregious that was. Mm -hmm. Not only because of the fact that the umpire was, was literally instigating it, okay, by taking off his mask and staring down Bumgarner. Bumgarner threw strikes. Mm -hmm. Those should have been called strikes. And the umpire had an attitude with him and clearly did not call strikes. Why am I bringing that up? Because when we talk about Ed Hockley with Cam Newton, if indeed you're refraining from making calls because of something other than the actual game itself and the rules that govern it, and instead you're personalizing it to some degree, you, you got a problem. You got to go. Now, I understand that baseball is different. I understand that baseball is different from football. My argument is, is that it shouldn't be. No matter what the sport is, there isn't a fan in those seats who come to see the umpire or the game official. I promise you, those fans who walk through the turnstiles, even though to a lesser degree, it's about the players in yep. the National Football League because it's just football. It's an event. It's only 16 games during the season. I promise you they would rather to see Cam Newton yep. than Ed Hockley. And I promise you, those folks that walked through the turnstiles for that game that San Francisco was playing with the Giants, I pro oh, you know, the San Francisco reigning MVP of the World Series, Madison Bumgarner. Yep. Come out there and pick. Totally agree. So when you've got that problem, I know. it's got to be addressed. 
across the board because the fans are being robbed as much as anybody else when that happens. Okay. I'm going to remind you again, Hockley is probably the most recognizable referee going right now. Doesn't in matter. part because of his big biceps that he's shown mm -hmm. often, yeah. you know, just for his, mm -hmm. his muscles. He, yep. he became like a cult figure. Okay, I'm with you. He's been so recognizable for so long, he may think that he's now a star referee. Mm -hmm. That should be an oxymoron. Star That's referee right. should not go together. That's Am right. I right? Yes. Absolutely. Because yes. th they're always the best. What's the old saying about that it's mostly for baseball mm -hmm. umpires, but they're at their best when you did not notice them. Is that not right? Yes. Yes. Well, let me ask basketball you, let me throw yeah. you this question. Mm -hmm. How many fans do you know know who the game officials are going to be prior to their arrival to the game. Some gamblers probably do. But, I, I understand you know, gamblers. That's about yeah. it. That's yeah. about that's it. it. Mm -hmm. Nobody else knows who the hell the referees mm -hmm. are going to be, who the officials are going to be prior to the game. You understand? It's the most thankless job you can fathom, which is why I understand how they could get a bit sensitive. Okay. But in the end, you can't allow that to interfere with your job performance okay. and that is what bottom line these officials do you, do you, are doing. do you have any concern that cam could quote unquote pay for this going forward because it will offend other referees who would defend hockey league well yeah i okay. have i have i have i'm fearful for cam because i think those referees can definitely stand up in unison and said he called him out that means he'll call us out next we have to make sure he understands that's not to his advantage yeah. to do that i have no doubt that that will be done but i still appreciate that he called him out yeah yeah i'm just fearful how often this might actually happen mm. The Steelers right. lose their franchise quarterback for several weeks. So what impact does Big Ben's knee injury have on the AFC North? Look who's here. Hello, Eric Allen in the house. What's he doing? We'll weigh in when we come back. <laughs> it's cold out. It's cold out here.